Hello friends, myself Rupesh Ghagi. Today we are going to study a very beautiful concept in mathematics that is mathematical induction, the method of mathematical induction. Instead of giving you the details of this concept, first of all try to solve a problem or try to give a proof using this principle, then I think you will be able to understand what exactly is meant by mathematical induction. Let's consider this problem. Prove that 1 square plus 2 square plus 3 square up to n square is equal to n into n plus 1 into twice n plus 1 divided by 6. For all n belonging to n. Now as we can see, we have to prove that the sum of squares of all the natural numbers up to n is equal to n into n plus 1 into 2n plus 1 upon 6. But how can we prove this? First of all, let's think of this. What if n is equal to 1? If n is equal to 1, on LHS we have 1 square that is equal to 1, only one term. And on RHS, if we put n is equal to 1, we get 1 into 1 plus 1, 2 into 2 into 1, 2, 2 plus 1, 3 upon 6, which is 2 into 3, that is 6 upon 6, and that is equal to 1. So we have LHS is equal to RHS, and we can say that this formula holds for n is equal to 1. But does it mean that this formula is true for all the natural numbers? We have just checked for n is equal to 1. So what we can do? Okay, we will try for n is equal to 2. For n is equal to 2, LHS becomes 1 square plus 2 square, which is equal to 1 plus 4, that is equal to 5. Whereas, on right hand side, we have 2 into 2 plus 1, 3. 2 into 2, 4, 4 plus 1, 5 divided by 6. This is 2 into 3, 6, 6 divided by 6 cancelled and we have 5. So again, for n is equal to 2 also, we have LHS is equal to RHS and we can say that, okay, now we know that this formula is true for n is equal to 1 and n is equal to 2. Then what we can do? We can again check for 3, we can check for 4, we can go on. But from this, can we say that this formula is true for all the natural numbers? Now, first of all, to say that this formula is true for all the natural numbers, we must check like this for all the natural numbers, but we have infinite natural numbers. What exactly we can do? Are we able to say that using, I mean, just taking for 1, 2, 3, 4 and then generalizing and can we say that this is true for all the natural numbers? Here, I will tell you a joke, a simple story of a layman, a mathematician and one logic, uh, uh, logician. Now these people, they went to a very a new city, they were going there for the first time and when they landed, when they came out of bus at that place, they saw no one was there around, no person was there around in that new city and suddenly they saw a black dog running across the street and it, uh, uh, it disappeared in, uh, on some street. Now, after looking at that dog, layman said, I think in this town there are many dogs which are black in color. But with this, the mathematician said that, no, you should not say like that, because you have seen only one dog. You should only say that, in this city, at least one dog, at least one dog is of black color. Listening to this, the logician quickly replied, no, no, no friend, you are again making a mistake. You should only say that, in this town, in this city, there is at least one dog which is black on at least one of its sides because when dog passed by, 
you have only seen one of its sides, but you don't know on the other side is it black or not. With this story, I just wanted to tell you that you have the facts. You have the facts. You have some certain fact in that story. You have the fact that you have seen a dog running around, which is black on one side. But can you generalize this fact to say that okay, this dog is completely black? Can you generalize this fact to say that all the dogs in that city are black? To generalize a certain property, you need certain set of instructions or certain set of rules to generalize it. Here, we are going to give you a very general, a very simple rule to generalize a particular formula for all the natural numbers. So now, here we start to explain what exactly is mathematical induction. From this formula only, just try to just try to uh, understand this, uh, this fact. First of all, let's say that whatever it is, this is the uh, statement, let's say this statement is P of n. P of n is the statement that 1 square plus 2 square plus 3 square up to n square is equal to n into n plus 1 into 2 n plus 1 upon 6. This is the statement that 1 square plus 2 square plus 3 square up to n square is equal to n into n plus 1 into 2 n plus 1 upon 6. Now, what will exactly be P of 1? P of 1 says that we have to take value of n is equal to 1. As we have already seen, LHS with n is equal to 1 is 1 square that is equal to 1. And RHS is equal to 1 into 1 plus 1 into 2 plus 1 upon 6 which becomes 1. So we have LHS and RHS to be equal. So we say that LHS is equal to RHS. We don't know about P and as general. But now here I can say that P of 1 is true. Now, in the second step, what we will do is just assume that some p of k is true. k is some natural number. Now, let's assume, let's say that p of k is true. If p of k is true, we are saying that 1 square plus 2 square plus 3 square up to k square is equal to k into k plus 1 into twice k plus 1 upon 6. We know this part. Now let's say, given that p of k is true, is p of k plus 1 is true? Let's take for p of k plus 1. What will be p of k plus 1? The p of k plus 1 should be 1 square plus 2 square plus 3 square up to k plus 1 square should be here k plus 1. k plus 1 plus 1 that means k plus 2 and here we should have twice k plus 1 plus 1 right so we will start from here for p of k plus 1 whether it is true and p of k plus 1 gives a statement 1 square plus 2 square up to k plus 1 square should be equal to we will have k plus 1 instead of k then here k plus 1 plus 1 that is k plus 2 here it will be k plus 1, so twice k plus 2 plus 1, that is twice k plus 3 upon 6. So this is something we want to prove. And if this holds, we can say that p of k plus 1 is true. Let's start from LHS, whether this holds or not. LHS 1 square plus 2 square up to k plus 1 square. But before k plus 1, surely there will be k square, right? And from 1 square to k square, as we have already said that we have assumed that p of k is true, 1 square plus 2 square up to k square, we know the formula for that. k into k plus 1 into twice k plus 1 upon 6 plus this k plus 1 square. We can take out k plus 1 as common. If we take k plus 1 common, the remaining part it is k into twice k plus 1, we can cross multiply k into twice k, it is twice k square plus k into 1 k plus cross multiply, but multiplication we will do or okay first of all I will do it step by step and here out of k plus 1 square k plus 1 will be remaining, I will go on solving it, k plus 1 into twice k square plus k 
plus c square plus 6 divided by 6. Now that is equal to k plus 1 into and if you take out this it will be twice k square plus 7k plus 6 and the factors if you take out the factors of that that would be k plus 1 into k plus 2 into the factors will be k plus 2 into twice k plus 3 twice k plus 3 divided by 6 that is equal to RHS. So what we have seen? We have seen that if we assume that P of K is true, then we are getting that P of K plus 1 is true. Right? That is from LHS to RHS. We have seen that this formula holds. This formula holds. Now we have seen two things. For this statement P of N, we have seen that P of 1 is true. And then second statement now we can make is if P of K is true, then P of K plus 1 is true. So what we have proved till now? First of all, we proved P of 1 is true. And then we proved that if P of K is true, then P of K plus 1 is true. Now, combining these two things, what we can say now? First of all, we know that P of 1 is true. But second statement says that if P of k is true, then P of k plus 1 is true. That means, if P of 1 is true, then P of 1 plus 1, that is P of 2 would be true. That means, already we have to prove that P of 1 is true. The second statement gives us that, hence, P of 2 is true. Now, P of 2 is true. If P of 2 is true, then P of 2 plus 1, P of 3 is true. And if we go on using this general rule, we are getting that for every next natural number, this statement P of n is true. Now here, we are not proving it for every number that is 1, 2, 3, 4 and so on. Because there are infinite natural numbers, we cannot prove like that. But, you doing this only two things. First of all, proving that P of 1 is true and after that, if P of K is true, then P of K plus 1 is true. Now we can generalize this result for all the natural numbers. That is, from what to all the natural numbers, this statement is true. This particular way of proving this generalization is known as mathematical induction. So what exactly is mathematical induction? We, we, uh, you have already understood, I think, but now we will just try to define what exactly is meant by mathematical induction. So, with mathematical induction, what we can say is, a certain statement P of n is true for all natural numbers. True for all natural numbers. That is, true for all natural numbers. If, number 1, P of 1 is true, and number 2, P of K plus 1 is true given that P of K is true. So this is statement for principle of mathematical induction. Any particular theorem, if we want to prove it for all the natural numbers, we just have to prove these two points and with that we can generalize this result for all the natural numbers. So I think from that, from this point, you, you will be easily able to prove many other uh, such problems. So here, I give you some assignment to try. Let's try to prove this, that 1 plus 2 plus 3 up to n is equal to n into n plus 1 upon 2 for all natural numbers. You can also try and prove cos theta plus i sin theta raised to n is equal to cos n theta plus i sin n theta for all 
and we are going to end. So just try these two problems and we will see the next concepts in any other next lecture. Thank you.